<laughs> what's that say? What's that say? Too much eggs. No, egg. egg. there's no much. Like, you get like, like five eggs a day minimum. No, I was it was. Say. It was. It was so bland though. Like the eggs were not that good. It was like ham, then some cheese. But, like the eggs were so bland and watery. It's like hmm. I've like, noticed that uh, when I go to a restaurant and all the chefs are Mexican, I get the worst breakfast taco I've ever had. But there's this gas station near my house where you legit have to order in Spanish. And like you see all the construction teams from all the neighborhoods being built out, mm-hmm. lined up like out the door. Like those are the best tacos in the neighborhood. Come to a little gas station. Just next yeah. time you go in, just say, "Are these pasture raised?" <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I'll understand that. But how was the okay. cheese? Was there enough cheese? Uh, th- I think there was enough cheese for like a normal croissant sandwich. Like it's saying <laughs> the egg was just. I think they used like maybe they might have used Swiss or something. Like they need to use something sharper. I hate the There's cheese a is more real flavor. Yeah, it, it you can't have runny the, eggs, man. It's like a, like a it's, Swiss on your breakfast. It's like you know, I, I want my egg white and spinach breakfast sandwich stuff. You put Swiss on a breakfast sandwich. What the f is this? Yeah, yeah it's got to be such, cheddar. It's such an American thing that like you go out for every for every um, eating moment of the day, like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's all going out. Like in Europe, we just make it ourselves. Only, only before you're married. Once you're married and have kids, and like loading up kids into the car takes you like forty five years, and having kids at a restaurant <laughs> is not fun. It's just yeah. like you know they scream and like, like you don't want that. Like so, once you have kids, you start cooking at home all the time, and it's better. No, we mm. we do it all the time here, with kids or without. Mostly when you're like when you get married and have kids here, that's when you go out. It's like oh, because it's fun and it's Sunday. It's your only day off. That does you not compute. Like we have to load kids up into a freaking car and then bring them somewhere and then strap them in a high chair and they scream and throw food everywhere. Like that's no fun. Like you, you'd rather mm. eat at home at that point. There are yeah. some people. Yeah. Uh, Noob actually brought Tadashi. I am. I am so happy. I am so happy. <laughs> yeah, that's that's nah. Look at that. <laughs> look, look at the man, ladies. He has a dog. Camera shy. You're a little camera shy. <laughs> well, I've heard it's actually a good like life hack. You're trying to meet girls, dog parks. If you have a dog, you're a dog person. Girls are dog person. It's a great way to strike up a conversation with people. Yeah, dog people yeah, to have that thing. It's a uh, trust thing. You can like if you're walking at because t- I live in a there's a couple bars near me. If you're if it's 10 p.m. and you're walking your dog, the anxiety from a brown six foot tall man goes away when they see a puppy <laughs> walking mm. next to him. It's 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 that. And also, everyone kind of likes you more if you have a puppy. It's it's human nature, I guess. Which and which is a the pit bull? Yes, no kidding. I was about to say something. No, actually, pit bulls are pretty popular now. They're they're resurgent. I mean, obviously, fuck, they're fuck those dogs. Yeah, not just, <laughs> not just because not just yeah. because of the danger, but they're fucking ugly. Yeah. I hate short no, faced dogs. We, I will have the mirror, but I mean, I, I will say whenever you know, whenever we hung out and I saw Tadashi in person, you know, I think how many in that short span of time, how many people walked by and they're like, oh, look at that cute little dog. So I'm like, yeah, that's a it's a good uh magnet for people. They just want to want to walk up to him no, and love on him and everything i don't blame him if you're an introvert that's trying to become a more social person and you have the lifestyle to support a dog is a good way to get you out of your shell because people yeah. will talk to you yeah i could see that yeah people it's will want to socialize with you I don't yeah. know. At first i've had a bunch of friends like who they all like collectively got pugs or something which are hideous oh, dogs like i don't know who started the whole like so ugly it's cute thing it sort of reflected <laughs> the guy's day day mm-hmm. but when it's something they can own and control <laughs> completely like a dog you know then uh, maybe, maybe there's something there. If you can own and control the guy completely, and he's so ugly, he's cute. I don't know. That'd be something yeah. girls would be into. No, well, well, well. Talking. Speaking of that. Speaking of that. Speaking of that. I, I finally found my segue because it was a bit hard. I was giving that to you. I was like, yeah, throwing yes, your softball back. Yeah. Yes, we're getting a pug. I bought no. a new dog. <laughs> <laughs> he's adopted. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Things women say. Thing mm-hmm. exactly things women say. There we go. That's what the meme was about. But like before we went on, Hawk had a whole rant about it. And Hawk, could you please kick it off? Where you? Yeah, with that? sure. I mean, so I'll say this. I I really like this meme. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I think it's hilarious. I think it's not you know super mean spirited either. So everyone's having you know good old wholesome uh, male fun. And the meme does a pretty good job of exposing dudes have never been in relationships before yeah and they try and like you know uh, uh quote something that the girl is saying that makes absolutely no fucking sense at all <laughs> it's like no they're she ain't saying that shut up and uh i uh it, it's it's pretty nice for that you know uh, exposing people then the other part of it is 
is that you've got like the the crew of like the incel dudes or the black pillars or whatever we're calling them these days who are like uh pouncing at other yeah guys they just they are... just put like a fresh and fit line on the on the meme and i was like where did yeah, you yeah no it doesn't no no it doesn't work man you know they're 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 quoting it with like either like some stupid bullshit that a girl says and like no it's not really the spirit of the meme man or the other thing that they're saying like calling everybody else you guys are all long housed because you're letting this mid girl manipulate you into doing something you know and, uh, the things guys who don't fuck say yeah exactly <laughs> yeah Every girl so, is a mid without makeup. So I'm kind of glad I haven't seen anybody reacting, any in guy acting that way. And I must be, I must be muting the right words and the right people now. Finally, excellent use of social media. Yeah, like, start, like I was saying, back... muting, uh, yeah, start muting a uh, uh, Iran now. That'll save you lots. Yeah. Of, <laughs> Uh, like we were talking about That's backstage, though, I mean, like this whole meme, like, the interesting part for me, at least, is the fact that, you know, you can take men from all over the world, all age groups, some marry, some dating, and every single guy is reading this girl with an apropos quote saying, oh, my God, my woman is just like that because... You know, she's that's like the every woman meme. And the fact she could take men from all over the universe and all situations where all like, oh, yeah, I've dated that girl. You know, maybe women aren't that different. Yeah, it kind of puts Nate Walt like the final nail in the coffin, right? Let's say A Walt <laughs> indeed, huh? Yeah. I mean, it does stem from something. It does come from something. The one, uh, what was wasn't that meme originated by a girl or something? Oh, yeah. Where did it yeah. come from, Hawk? You know about that. Uh, kind of. I mean, from what I saw with my brief little bit of, uh, you know, digging into it, it seemed like a. A right wing poster by the name of Spandrel uh, came up with it in like 2022. That's when I saw it uh, last, but it might have been earlier. I mean, it's like one of those memes that once you see it everywhere and it picks up such mainstream uh, appeal, it's almost impossible to track down the the origin. You know, well, you've done more mm. research than any of us. If you spent five minutes looking into this, you are the expert. <laughs> I think I think I found it. Let's see on Know Your Meme, of course. Of course. Is that like see. Snopes, but for memes? Yes, yeah. pretty much. I was yeah. looking it up. It actually, does, it actually does a pretty good job. It actually does a pretty good job. <laughs> Back in 2021, uh, Redditor oh, okay. Ava spelled backwards. Made a post to the Wojak Drawing subreddit, sharing a custom Wojak based on herself. Because, of course, it's self-insertion. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at some of the I'm examples. Not. I know your meme. Yeah, the, the post flew under the radar for a while, only gaining around 15 upvotes in three years. Then in July 2020, two uh, ex user Paul Scalas reported the image with the caption, oh, really? Where are we going this weekend? Yes, a phrase any wife <laughs> guy will be familiar with. Yes. You never when... take me out. We went out yesterday. That doesn't count. <laughs> that doesn't count. That's that not a date. <laughs> yeah. Uh, There's just all the tropes. Like someone like sorry, shorter, shortened her hair in one of the memes or something. Had her start saying more extreme things. And like, yeah. you know, if your wife ever makes a drastic change to her hairstyle out of the blue, um, start getting your ducks in a row with lawyers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I like cool. the one where they put they put a bunch of Amazon boxes in front of her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like I, I cannot rant enough that the only thing more expensive than divorce is marriage. Just Amazon boxes <laughs> show up at your house every five minutes. I, you don't know what's in them, you know. Just I had to yeah, laugh because there was... yeah, girls forget what they order sometimes. They just order it and they're like, "What is this I again?" Something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I laughed how uh, delicious tacos uh, tweeted one where the chick has no clothes on and it's just like a red dot <laughs> as her nipple. <laughs> you know. And yeah, that's all I saw that. Out. And then I quote tweeted like uh, something very, th and that's that's what really separates like the incels the black pillars. Mm -hmm. Because when you do the sexual version of her, everyone's like saying like really mean spirited things or things that girls do that that like you know ruin like like I cheated on you or something like that. Where where the guys I get later just like. Hey, stay there. Uh, don't move. I'll get you. Where are your towels? Because you know you're you have <laughs> a lot of times women will clean you up. You know something like that. Like that's that's how you tell too. Like guys that don't get laid is that the sexual version of that meme. Like guys also who have girlfriends have or you know they have they, they have this experience where everyone's like, oh yeah, that's happened to me before. That happens all the time. So yeah. Yeah, it's like when mm. the chick first comes over. Oh, bathroom's out there on the right. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, oh wait, I just I just thought of some um, of one where it's like this is gonna resonate with you guys. Let's see, where is it? Let me. I'll tweet it out real quick before I mention it. Before I mention it, because this Don't will resonate. Mary now. 
on Jack's Twitter. Uh, go, go around like you know posting meme captions. I mean, this is like even better than like a Twitch stream. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> but god damn it, get in here. Mm, there it is. While he's looking too, I really, really like the one where they made one of a guy that's like in a flannel or something, and he's got the short hair and the the beard going on, and it almost looks like Matt Walsh and Ryan caught onto it and beat me to it because I was going to put the, <laughs> you know, a YouTuber over the name of Ryan Stone. I was like, yeah, no, Ryan Stone. That's, Ryan my Stone. <laughs> that's my favorite. It's my favorite male version of that one because I was literally about to do the same thing, but just add some glasses to him and make that same quote, and I was like, dang it, you beat uh, me to it right at the very minute. It doesn't like, hit quite the same though. Uh, I uh, don't know. It does, <laughs> I didn't, but that's why that's why because it was funnier to make fun of that specific version of it anyway. Just be like, nobody's gonna know what this means, so I'm just gonna ruin it. Yeah, I did like the one where they post like don't clean the cast iron, I'll handle it. <laughs> With that Oof. generic guy, I'm like, <laughs> Oh yeah. Mm. Here, here we go, here we go, here we go. This one will resonate with you. If it doesn't, I don't know, man. But I have been here so many fucking times that I'm so tired of it. <laughs> every time it's like it's like look we're gonna eat blah 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 what do you want are you sure are you sure i'm not hungry are you sure okay like going to bed sure middle of the night i'm hungry <laughs> yeah you could just you could just I'm caption that as well with I'm saying children <laughs> you could just like, caption it with the with the chick saying you pick <laughs> <laughs> or, or it's like, I'm not, or how about I'm not hungry and then you get something to eat and suddenly she's hungry or vice, or no, she's, she's hungry. You're not hungry. And then when you say you're not hungry, she's not hungry anymore. She doesn't want to eat. And then, then you feel it's like, oh, okay, now you want to, you want to starve with me. Yeah. Cool. Or, or like, I'm hungry. It's like, well, I'm not, but we could get you a sandwich. And then you get there and it's like, what do you want? I'm like, I just told you I'm not hungry. We're here mm -hmm. for you. Well, yeah. pick one. It's like, mm-hmm. Yeah, um, the, one that later. I, the one that I posted that resonated the most was, um, uh, did you bring me one? I, I uh, like, yeah. <laughs> like, like 10 minutes of that one. I like that. Yeah, because yeah, like, as, yeah. as a guy, you have to hide your Starbucks sometimes uh, or drink it before you get home because she'll be like, did you bring me one? <laughs> yeah, or you know, I'll like, a, well, you, you order something, you know, that you know she likes to. So that way when you come home, you know, and you're like, you can surprise your woman. You're like, yeah, you got the sandwich you like. Here's your fries. I got ketchup and ranch dressing because she likes her fries, a ranch dressing or something. You know? <laughs> now when she steals your fries, like you, you get brownie points. You thought of her. Yeah. It's and I didn't get that from girlfriend. That was my mom. Like, growing up, that was my mom. Every time I went out for McDonald's or or I got like a McFlurry or something. My mom loves McFlurries. Um, and I, for, I forget to, or I, I always bring one and I would tease her because eventually I caught on when I, you know, hit my late teens. I was like, oh, I should probably start bringing stuff for my mom. And uh, I'd, I'd always tease her and be like, sorry, mom, I didn't bring you one. And then I'd pop, she'd get mad that I'd pop one out behind me or something like that. All women are the same, mother, sister, girlfriend. It's, we, and the thing is, the thing about this meme is that a lot of girls at first they took it as some mean spirited like we 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 don't like we hate women red meat podcast type shit but in reality it's just like this is how this is how men love women we we like there's a there's a joke by Patrice O'Neill that says we can't like and love women right like a man there's two types of ways a, a man can feel about a woman there's like and love and a man a, a man and like is like yeah she's such a hoe i love her where uh uh, a man in love is just like, oh, God, there we go again. But she, he's in love with her, right? And girls don't understand that. They think that we have to constantly be like treating them like princesses and amazed that they exist. But in reality, a man that loves you is going to be slightly annoyed by you. That's just the way we are, you know? And I hope, yeah. you know, I hope they understood that with this meme. Women have this weird fantasy where, like, um, you will meet a girl, she is blitheringly average in just about every way, but there is something about her personality and who she is that just captivates you. And, yeah, I mean, like, look at, like, media, you know, what if you're, like, some fabulously rich hot guy who's in, like, you know, bondage, or if you're, you know, a, a sparkly vampire or something, you, you meet an average woman and there's just something so special about her. You fall madly in love with her, even though you could have any woman you wanted. And that, that's like, you know, every girl's dream is something about her personality. Just who she is is so freaking special that, you know, you're swept off your feet just by that. And that's what you're supposed to love about her. Yeah. The God Chris forbid you Walmart like her boobs. body. God How forbid you like her boobs. Exactly. Yeah. Like, no, that's shallow. There's something that's every hunter personality. 
Well, yeah. that's when she says, love me for me. And I'm like, well, you're right there. That's you. Your your body is you. That's a, a you're friend, existing. A, fr a friend and I used to make a joke about that. Like, where are your boundaries? I'm like, well, it depends on the cup size. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, like, if you think about it, like, I mean, you're supposed to love someone because their personality is a little different from other people's personalities. I was talking to my wife, therapist, and she, she wholeheartedly agrees that there are maybe a dozen different kinds of people out there. It's from all the different clients she's met and talked to, personalities aren't that different. <laughs> And it's not even like personality types like Myers Briggs bullshit or anything like that. Like it's, you know, just there are only so many different types of people out there, different colors and nuances, obviously, but the people aren't that different personality wise. You fit into one of the types. Mm. Yep. yep. Yeah. I mean, say whatever you want, though. Like, if, like, okay, of course, that's the first thing you notice. Like, is she attractive? But if she can make me laugh and laugh hard, then it's like, okay, we're off to the races. How does that work, Jack? Because women, women are, are funny. funny. Well, yeah. some some are some are in all yeah, honesty, unintentionally okay. unintentionally red hog. It's never intentional. It's always funny. <laughs> Thank some, you. Yeah, <laughs> clarification it's required. It's it's some were intentionally funny. Some were just like goofy to look at. Where it's like, oh, this is adorable. <laughs> well, female yeah. humor tends to be like more. I act like a goofball humor, not I tell dad jokes humor. Yeah. You know? she's yeah. so cute when she tries to be smart, or like <laughs> uh, like when they're klutzes. Yeah. No, so, some were actually funny where I just laughed my ass off. Where I was like, okay, this is pretty fucking hilarious. Like the, the way they could tell stories or whatever. It's like, okay, this is pretty fucking hilarious. God, women's stories are so annoying, though. They're like, you know, there's no, no beginning, just, there's, there's the no end. There, there's just here. one long middle. Like, here, you know, here, here's yeah, a hack. Here are... Here's a hack. Uh, this is a Patrice O'Neill joke. Always ask her, what's the ending? And the, first, like, tell me the ending first. And the joke is like, uh, I don't let women waste my time with stories. I, I let my wife or my girl tell me the end first, and then I act. Then I know if I'm interested. It's like you know those uh, Christopher Nolan movies where they show the ending first, and then you're like, okay, now I'm now I'm invested. Some so of those stories like, don't have ends, though. Like, you know, the whole point is like, well, Jenna was acting weird, wasn't she? Like, you oh, know, they're, yeah. they're, <laughs> like, you know, like I always thought it's the lawyer in me. Conclusion up front, and then you have the supporting facts, and you end with a conclusion again, and people especially people with like, you know, self-esteem or insecurities do not start with a conclusion because they're afraid you will immediately respond or stop listening and not listen to their story. So they mm. build up to the punchline. It takes 45 minutes. You mm. don't know what you're looking for in that information because she did not start with a conclusion. Okay. And so like, you know, you have no idea what, what parts of the story are important. You're trying to hold all that in your head. You just can't. It's too much. Some 45 minutes like later, that. she asks a question and it's like, you just can't. I don't know. Some could be like that, but they started mentioning their girlfriends who I just totally did not care about. And there were moments where I actually looked at her and was like, could you just shut up? Just why would you say that? It's like, because I'm enjoying the weather. It's like, I'm, I am actually enjoying this day. You're telling me about a girlfriend who you don't even like, which is so weird. Like, have you guys ever been there where it's like, do you even like your girlfriends? Like, do you even like the people you hang out with? They fucking hate each other. That like, starts young. Hell? My daughter's mm -hmm. 12 and she hangs out like, you know, with this eclectic mix of kids from like theater and like, there's these like alarming goth kids and like, you know, um, like this one like pretty blonde who doesn't fit in and then my daughter's there too. And so like, like this whole eclectic group of kids and she tries to like be, you know, like all like the other kids. I'm like, you know, I'm talking to her like, hey, I'm like, who are you? I mean, these people are your friends because they, you know, like you for you. So, I mean, why would you be like, I don't really know how I want to be. So I, just, I try to be like my friend April and I'm like all right but i mean long term maybe that's not going to be happy i think you should focus on being you but no. yeah, it starts young you know women all you know they have their pecking order i think order they and... need it in their relationship it's kind of like how we call each other the f word and things like that and we don't hate each other they actually hate each other and they're friendly it's like it's that's their... that that's that meme that i've seen that i still i need to find it again where it's the the guys will be like all right see you later loser all right f you too all right i hate you all right and then behind their backs they're like that guy's so cool and then the girls are like oh you're so beautiful slay queen and then when the girl's walking away man i hate that girl yeah what's that family guy clips you know men know how to be friends or something women do not <laughs> yeah. Yeah. let me get to this one we real don't quick. know what we did yeah <laughs> Not so great for two bucks. Thank you very much for the two dollars. Cappy's favorite place to meet girls: women's shelter. Anything <laughs> wrong? I mean, the bar is pretty low. I mean, that is true. Twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. Oh my god. god! One of the it. best places to meet women, I'm convinced, is nice neighborhood or nice apartment neighborhoods in southern cities. Those you will find the most fit, professional, and nice women there. It's I don't yeah. know. I know. Yeah. There's definitely a correlation with the further south you go in this country, the more attractive the women become. 
Yeah, but don't go to the country. Mm-hmm. Like you have to go to like a, a modern like. Uh, don't go to the country in Alabama. Go to Mobile, Alabama. <laughs> yeah, yeah like, uh, the urban yeah. south, not, yeah. not like the Appalachian yeah. hillbilly south. <laughs> yeah, don't oh, go to old. It. No, don't go to Old Town, Texas, where the population of the city competes with how many how much teeth a person has or something. You know, Mm-mm. get out of there. No, stay away you from get, there. You get some big girls in the rural areas for sure. You do. Yeah. You go to like small town Texas, for example. Like you see, every street corner is the same woman with the same perm holding the baby or something. Like you don't want to go there, but you go to like an urban center. Yeah, it's Houston, the sweet tea. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say Houston was considered what the most obese city in the country for a reason wait which city houston was houston was at least if it wasn't the most obese it was like one of the top five if i remember right this was past up san antonio yeah Yeah, i think it did i think it did at one point i gotta look it up again but i remember it was one thing that i was like is that really something to brag about yeah, San yeah. Antonio makes sense because Mexico is it just just beat America for the most obese country in the uh, world. I love I really? love the Charles Barkley uh, San Antonio memes. I don't know if you ever seen that. I think that interview that he had. Yeah. Was, oh like, yeah. I got remember. some big old women in San Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> he, got, he got in trouble for saying that, but he keeps bringing it up. I always <laughs> loved it. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, like it's a good touristy city in Texas. You come, you own a river walk, you go to the mall, see the Alamo. But like, if you actually live in San Antonio, what do you do? You just eat a bunch of Mexican food and work a desk job, or you know, some food trucks, right? Noise churros, like got them churros in San Antonio. Nice. Yeah, the, the food trucks, churros. right? It, you know, I weird. was kind of impressed by the Alamo, that area right there. I'm like, this is pretty nice. That's a nice area. Yeah, I do like that area a lot. So I did the research real quick. So Houston is now 49th. It was up in the top like years ago i couldn't remember how long ago but number one is actually mcallen texas so that's yeah, something mexico too. i'm telling you yep. mexico's yep. the fattest yep. country in the world mm. yep. Callen, where's that it's like down near the valley mm-hmm. it's like yeah the, something like that the tip yeah. right the, the the tip of texas just the tip yeah mm. the tip of just texas. the tip <laughs> just the tip i had a client down in the valley he um he actually showed up my office one day surprised me did some prison time for drugs or something and like he won patents on something he came up with he showed up at my office like to like as a thanks for like a big sack of grapefruits and oranges he got from his orchard in the valley i'm like awesome yeah i ate, like nothing but citrus fruit for like you know three months Grapefruit is so underrated. I don't know why it's not more popular. It's so, especially when you make That's drinks like, with, with yes. like tequila. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah so juicing your own fruit, that is a game changer. Like people who are like, oh, I'm going to use lime juice from the bottle or something. F you guys. Yeah, I, I got to stop mm. doing that. It can be it can be hit or miss sometime with fruit, though. Like if you get to get it at the store, maybe I'm oh, just yeah. not picking the stuff right. But sometimes you have like grapefruit and it's like so juicy. And tart, mm. and then other times it's like, what? What is this? It's just yeah. water you know, with like salt strawberries in it. too. Yeah. Yeah. There should be yeah. a college yeah. course on how to pick good fruit at the supermarket because nobody knows how to do this. And even if you know, you know, you, it's still kind of hit or miss. Like things like balancing your checkbook and buying fruit at the supermarket, like these are underrated skills. Yeah, I gotta you know, my, man. Mom. my mom probably know. knows how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's fun about fruits too. Is that uh, I was talking about this the other day. Um, like you take the fruit and you take a candy or a flavoring of the fruit and they don't taste anything alike. Say you want like a watermelon flavored drink or something. It doesn't taste like watermelon. Have an actual watermelon and taste that and you'll find that there's a huge difference. Blueberries, same thing. Blueberries are actually a little more, sometimes they have a little sweetness to them if they've got like, if they're a little darker, but like the more plump ones, those are almost uh, tart, almost yeah. sour and it doesn't taste Blueberry anything. jelly bellies. Those are an atrocity. Yeah. They taste nothing like a blueberry. No, what about exactly. banana? What about the it, banana runts? What what flavor is a banana runt anyway? It's, it's, ethyl butyrate that, flavored. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ethyl butyrate is that flavor ester that like um, you know, with, with two carbon or something. Like it's the one that like um actually has that smell and flavor of banana. You from So yeah. funny story, my senior year of um college, I did a a chem lab on flavor esters in wine. So I put them through solid phase micro extraction, put them in like a GC, record all the peaks and figure out what esters are in what wines. Your cheap ass wines, like your yellowtail Shiraz, all ethyl acetate. Your good wines, ethyl butyrate, ethyl octanoase, some of those bananas and orangey flavors. Like you can science a good wine. Okay, mm-hmm. just nerd out for a sec on, on with like girl stuff. No, that, that's yeah. okay. That's okay. I mean, hey, just, I'm taking notes. Like this is the real red pill, life advice on how to pick fruit and why banana runs don't this, taste this like is actionable advice like internet yeah, gender really. wars and stuff no I mean, shit. where no, do no. men go when they've got it uh, when they've got it figured out well semi figured out some, some some of you have it completely figured out it's like where do you go from there well daily daily business 
Yeah, the useful Fruit. stuff like navigating oyster restaurants, picking good grapefruits. Like, you know, how how do I get my diet better so I age gracefully and keep off the dad bod? Like, this is useful mm -hmm. life advice. Like, you know, mm -hmm. internet gender war, that's boring. Nah, take the red. Take the red. on that though. Like, like, what is the minimum? The habit together. Like, when are you finally a guy where you're like, you know what? I mean, I'm content with life. My my shit's in order. Like, you know, now I just start learning about grapefruit. Like, what is that point for a guy? Um, I would say I think not only when he can get girls, but only is able to keep them. Maybe I don't know. Uh, I know, I know what it is. When you uh, when you finally get into the phase where you where you start aggressively searching and identifying the things you can't change mm -hmm. that's when a lot of guys start like pivoting over to like actual like you know oh the election year and uh, oh, you know yeah, trump no. and biden once you give that up or women and we gotta you know we gotta stop having sex with women so they can be better for us you know that no. kind of stuff once you give that up completely you start like wait should i take piano lessons or wait should i learn how to do maintenance on my car? Like, should I do the things that, should I learn stuff that'll make my life better instead of commenting on the internet about how I would fix the country or fix Iran versus Israel, whatever conflict. Mm -hmm. I think that's when guys start pivoting over to like being actual better human beings, you know? And like small yeah. doses. There's yeah. something to that, like almost like when you look at your life, the universe, everything happening around you with like, like I guess, amused mastery, like, you know, the dollar's going to hell, you know, both presidential candidates suck, you know, the people are fighting random wars around the world. You're just like, huh, that's interesting. I'm going to go play piano. Yeah, yeah. Right. I'm going to go play hell divers with, with David and the boys and Red Hawk, you know. Oh, like, yeah. Really? That's all you yeah, and keep your ear to the ground, you know. If you, yeah. if you want to like, flee the country, you know, keep your ear to the ground, but then just go play video games. I mean, fuck it. Yeah, yeah that, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, I, I'd say this whole topic kind of centers around when you get to the point as a dude where life, you know, isn't just happening to you anymore. Like you are actually an exactly there. Player. You go, Red Hawk. You put it much better than I did. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like when you actually have options at some point. You know, it's like, oh, okay, I got some flexibility now. I got some spending money. I got some, mm -hmm. you know experience uh, i could change yeah. jobs if i want to and it wouldn't destroy yeah, my yeah. Life. not just, not just exactly. options with a woman but like options in life like i can yeah, yeah, yeah yeah it, that's when you start like wait do i know how to make a steak properly let me look up a video and learn how to make a steak mm -hmm. that that was me because like a couple years ago i was like oh like i gotta mm -hmm. change and and the, the culture war which is yeah. fine for a young guy because it fires you up a little bit it gives you a little bit of motivation to lift and you know like there's nothing wrong with a little patriotism. You know, I love this country and all that. But at the same time, a lot of people on the internet are just like, you need to do more and stop having sex and do this and do this. And then I'm like, dude, I served my country for six years. What else do you want from me, dude? Like, mm -hmm. I, like yeah. I, I've done enough for you, for this country. I made sure people's Amazon packages and gas prices stayed low for six years. Like, uh, you know, I was part of that Operation Hair Resolve. Leave me alone, dude. Like, I just want to live my life and, and pet my puppy on a podcast talking about memes you know no leave me alone no pretty much well behaved dog by the way yeah well she's a very very stoic you know look at him he's just meditating about life <laughs> cute dog very how cute do dog. i make how do i make the best briskets how do i make my kibble taste better yeah you, about. Like, like, like when you're 27 28 30 32 you're in that range if you're a guy in that range and you're single like you don't often recognize the opportunities you have you don't have a wife or a girlfriend or kids breathing down your throat right now it, yeah. you could go on youtube and learn how to fix your own garbage disposal because you don't have to do it in five minutes and your wife i did just that i learned how to do that two years ago i learned everything yeah. I fixed it exactly. You could go on YouTube and learn how to cook the perfect steak. It doesn't matter if you fuck up five or six, you know, expensive ribeyes. There's no wife there to yell at you about it. There's no kids there eating chewy steaks. Like you've got all the time in the world, all the options. Like I can learn how to fix garbage disposal, or I mean, maybe don't drop your own transmission. That's complex or something. But like you know, there's all kinds of stuff you can learn just off of the internet, even. And you've got all the time in the world to learn things that interest you. Mm -hmm. True. I mean, that is a thing, and I I have even said that before, and. For for the record, just for the record, I'm not shitting on guys who are married. I'm not shitting on marriage as a whole. I'm not shitting on anything. I'm not shitting on women. Women are I'll great. I'll myself. The thing is, if you are single and you are like 30, 31, 32 to 35 or whatever, it's not like life is over. Like you have to remember that there are plenty of people who are married at that age, have kids at that age, and they're terribly fucking miserable. And it goes down back. It goes. It comes back down to that Bill Burr quote, where, um, what was it? Imagine living 
in a house in a king size bed with king with kids who don't respect you and a wife who doesn't love you compared to sleeping on the futon in an empty house. I would take the futon every day over that. Like, have you ever slept next to somebody and felt alone? That oh, is yeah. the most horrible feeling you can ever have. So when you're single in 30 or something to 35, you have the time and the opportunity to change your life in such a fashion that you seem fit, that you deem fitting for you instead of having to worry about everybody else in your surroundings. Like, I know, mental point of origin and all that, but of course you have to take into consideration the people next to you, your wife, your kids, whatever, the schools they go to, the friends they have, her social life, her job, etc. You can't just pack up your stuff and leave and tell her to, well, come with you. Now, in some cases, it can, depending on where uh, her expertise lies and blah, blah, blah. And can she get a job easily in that area? Then it's all fine and dandy. But not every situation is the same. So if you are in that situation where time is on your side and you can do whatever you want, a, you're pretty blessed. Yeah, I mean, it's not even about, like, getting henpecked by your wife. It's just like, you know, if you're learning how to fix a garbage disposal and you don't have a kitchen sink for three days, that's hard to put a family of four through that. Like, you have garbage disposal parts all over the floor while you're learning this, but live on your own, it doesn't matter. And, I mean, that translates in all areas of your life. Like, yeah, like getting a job, you know, and, like, moving cities where your wife can also find employment. Like, you're you're responsible for other people in ways that you wouldn't be if, you know, you could take two and a half days fixing a garbage disposal. Well, the thing is that young men or like guys, they they can't handle freedom. Freedom is incredibly scary for guys, you know, mm -hmm. like, uh, do you know how hard it is to like for a lot of guys? There's an inflection point, especially I, I'd say like when a guy sleeps with two different women in one week. Right. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if, if they haven't done it or they've never done it, that's a weird point for a guy, because first thing you notice is no one cares, like no one's no one on the Internet cares no one really watched him his neighbors don't care his mom didn't no one found out because he's realizing like wait no one cares you know this thing that i complain about uh on the internet that no one cares about men is actually good and awesome and the fact that i can do whatever i want and then one day uh he'll see a tweet about like some guru saying playing video games is a waste of time or doing this is a waste of time or this is a waste of time or this is a waste of time he looks at his life is like, wait, I'm, I, I have a good job. My, you know, I know how to take care of myself. I'm going to the gym, doing everything to take care of myself. I'm a responsible adult. Why is this person telling me I can't enjoy the little simple things in life that, you know? So a lot of guys, they hate the freedom at first, but then when they finally exercise and get over that fear of, of like everyone judging them, they kind of find this freedom and peace that like very few men find because, you know, men get hand delivered by different institutions that commandeer what they want. Like, for example, they'll become they'll 18 and they go to college and they'll have a girlfriend and the girlfriend kind of, then they break up and maybe he goes to the military. Then he has to do what the military says for a couple of years. And then he gets out and then he gets an employer. And then finally, when like around 28, 29, when he's finally kind of like seen enough and realized that like, Hey, I did this thing and no one cared. I did that thing and no one cared. Um, he starts kind of like transitioning into a, more peaceful version of themselves because he finally wakes up right and that and a lot of way people make money is to keep men into that like hey think like mm -hmm. me it works for me and and join the club and be become label yourself as an extension of my online brand right so mm -hmm. you know um and you see this all the time and it's just like dude you don't understand like when you finally become your own person your own hero your own adult your own whatever it's scary at first but it, it's just a more peaceful life, you know? No, true. And especially when you start to realize that most of these online branding are only playing into your fears of being something you don't want to be. Like, you don't want to be poor. You don't want to be sexless. You don't want to be a commie. It's like, buy my brand or go into my, my private group and you will not be a commie. Whatever. It's like, and then you start to realize, like, oh, wait, it's all marketing. It's playing into my fear of missing out or my, well, yeah, mostly the fear of missing out. And as soon as you see like the marketing for what it is, I think as a brand as well, or like you have a choice to make. Either you become a brand or you kind of become an outsider of that kind of thing. Do I make sense? Where it's like you see, you see it for what it is. Like right now, the red meats and the 
the outrage and everything. Or you kind of go like our way where it's like, yeah, we just hang out and every now and then there's a topic. Yeah, yeah guys, we could be talking about uh, Nala for the 10th fucking time. Yeah, that would be great. Oh, but, yeah, that's her. Yeah, that's the, uh, the, the, the red dyed hair chick. I, I do understand, too, like this, how everyone's mad. I'm like, I'm like the medium. I'm like medium is a message kind of person, right? Like I like, for example, that date psych weirdo was like most people that are married are happy. Oh, I'm like, okay, so why are there so yeah, many? Yeah. Yeah. Fucking true, you fucking idiot. I mm -hmm. said, statistically speaking, you will never be happily married. Now, that's a cappy statistic in his book, The Menu. A lot of people mm -hmm. think that's a doomer way of looking at it. I'm like, dude, sometimes you have to understand. In order to understand a problem, you got to understand like what the output of the problem is, like what the downstream effect of a problem. That way you can solve the problem. <laughs> you know, you can't just put a, a paint, a turd white and say, you know, or, or, spray a paint a, a turd gold and say it's gold you know you have to like figure out why is everyone not being married why are marriages failing that way if you one day decide to get married you can at least have something to arm yourself to give yourself a chance and if you don't win have the mental model to like exit uh, uh, a, a belief or a, a ideology you held dear like the constitution of marriage and and that's why people are failing because we don't want to accept what's in front of us we want to like we want the this fantasy of like, no, actually people who are married are actually happy. And I'm like, you know, my uncle got married and he divorced and he's a broken man right now. And then my friend, and then this, and I went in the mm. military and half our division got divorced after eight month deployment. Like, why are you trying to, why are you trying so hard to defend this? That's <laughs> it's, it's, it's a very womanly way to approach the issue too. Like, you know, here's all those problems, you know, it's like, well, I'm five foot eight. My marriage worked. I mean, like, you know, Fuck you. Like, you know, I mean, even, even if we assume it's correct, let's say 51% of people who are married are happy. How many people are married? There are still a bajillion unhappy married people, you know, and like that's an issue. Whether even if it's like not the majority, it's like millions and millions of people who are unhappy in their marriages. But like, yeah, I you mean, gotta... you know, date psych, date psych sells hope with his bed, bath, and beyond psychology. He sells hope. <laughs> bed, that's bath, and beyond psychology. psychology. Uh, yeah, we're <laughs> And they're going bankrupt. I think Bed Bath Beyond is going bankrupt too. They, no, they've already closed everything. It yeah, yeah. It's just a kitchen boy, a kitchen book Freudian psychology. It's a phrase I used to use. <laughs> uh, how did I, I was at a party somewhere and some bitch told me like the only reason you work out is because your dad's overweight. And I look at her. I'm like, did you get that from a book, Freud? I just yeah. shut uh, up. Uh, like, but yeah, but when I look at that date psych guy, it's like I said, bath. Bed and beyond psychology, where it's like it's psychology for the normies, for the masses. I need to study it, you know, these evil red pillars. Look, what the fuck is even his problem with us? Like, hey, pop psychology what? is a very popular genre, especially among middle aged women. Like, it sells. Ah. Yeah, it's books. funny too, considering that uh, the only people he gets head pats from are like the reject, like con ink women, like Lauren Southern had like a a tweet oh, that yeah. this week, she's like, <laughs> here's all the men on this site that actually like women and behave nicely and have nice things to say. And of course, I like women like more than date psych, man. That guy yeah. is a psycho. No, so, so I got guy. an idea Funnily now. Enough, and... Lauren Southern tagged nobody. She fucked on that list. So it's more like the guys who I didn't <laughs> fuck in the right wing space. That's more what Damn, that list was Jack. about. So, so, Damn. no, fuck, so fuck what... these people. Seriously, fuck these yeah. people. I, I just have a list. Everyone should just be blocking that fucking guy. I blocked him almost a year ago at this point. I'm not engaging. This guy doesn't act in good faith. He he wouldn't exist if he didn't steal all of our fucking material all the time. Just block him. And it's, so, don't engage. So I, I don't no, ever see much. him post anything, thankfully, um, unless if somebody's talking about him. But I'm thinking, so you're telling me now I should block him and not like take every post of his and re retweet it with a picture of Bed Bath & Beyond. <laughs> Yeah, you know, just do that. Much. You know, make it a running joke. Let's make this a thing now. Well, yeah, part, it's a it's a rough freedom. Dutch translation. We have like house town and Koga, which is home uh house town and Koga, uh home house and house house, home and kitchen is the rough translation. And I just went with bath, bath and beyond. Is it perfect? Works. Doesn't matter. They're they're going bankrupt anyway. But the thing <laughs> is that's part of the that's part of the freedom of a man, and that's what they want to take away from you is for your the ability for you to observe and act on what you observe. Like if if you if you went through, if I let's say I went through the military and half my division got divorced, and then some guy on the internet who I don't know who has a vested interest in bringing women in, into his brand because it doubles the amount of input uh, or doubles the amount of money and and followers right he has, 
then it's like, why are you attacking me? Why are you attacking men for calling it how they see it, right? I know men are naive, and I know they're, you know, young men, right? But if if we're if we're allowing young men to operate nuclear reactors at 23, and the average age on the most powerful weapon we have, a carrier, is uh, 21 or 19, I think, no, 19, 20 or 19, then why can't we let them make the decision for themselves whether they want to get married? And if they don't want to make the decision, provide incentives instead of yelling at them constantly and telling them, fix these problems that you didn't solve right now or else you're a bad person. I'm like, dude, like, how unfair is that, right? Mm -hmm. And with all this, we still make memes about how much we like women, but in a roundabout way. And they still are not happy. It's just like, dude, we don't hate women. We just we don't want to get our lives destroyed. That's all we want. We just want to we just want peace. It's all about living in harmony. What is more powerful on that ship? The weapons or the women mingled with the men? The most powerful thing in the military I've ever seen was a girl got pregnant on the ship. Oh damn. And we had to we had to divert course so we can get close enough to Africa so we could fly her off using uh, one of our planes. Mm-hmm. That's how powerful women are in the military. They can divert the most powerful weapon on earth a couple hundred miles so we could fly them off, so we could send them home. And, and the military mm-hmm. probably paid an internationally shipper from Africa, like back to the US, yep. right? And she got sent to a nice shore command. She will get zero uh, reprimand for that. And uh, yeah, and then we have the F 22s or the F 18s. Those are also pretty powerful. Did you have to have like a course about uh, birth control? Then, like, did everyone have to sit in like one of those Gosh. training classes <laughs> after that, dude. dude. It's it's strange because, um, when after that, it was it was trying to they try to keep it quiet, right? Because before a deployment, a lot of women try to get pregnant so they can get out of the deployment and all that stuff. Hey, shall we derail the the stream on purpose? I know he loves that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but at the end of the day, uh, when when you saw when you saw the amount of uh, power women have in the military and, and like how um like i saw a girl that checked on board she was like an e nothing we call it me nothing's uh people that join are very low ranks and i joined in the military as an e e one uh, e3 and then i got to e5 that girl made rank all the way to my rank having joined the military years after me within two years she was an e5 two and a half years which is unheard of and it's because she was banging like one of the highest ranking people in the, in the main office of our reactor department, right? And that's scary. Yeah. I like I, a lot of guys felt jealousy. I was fucking terrified. That means if I mess with that girl or piss her off, the I I was in trouble. So no, no, no. I would it just means, avoid one. I would just avoid it, them all together. I was terrified. It means that guys just need to put out more in the military if you want a higher rank. That's what that means. <laughs> If it works in Hollywood, man. Player, hate the game. <laughs> yeah. Don't mess Put with her. Unless you get a dishonorable discharge. God. Yeah, that's, that's why when Terrence Pop talks about this stuff, you got to listen because it's yeah, it's, it's very very terrifying. It, a lot of guys see a lot of women. They take this dreadful stuff as like we're just and we hate women. No, we're just like no, we we are terrified of the amount of power they have in society. Sometimes it's it's scary. Like if I have a female boss, I have to. Um, I have to talk to her a certain way and different. And I might have to make a lot of decisions for her because, you know, sometimes a lot of female bosses defer decisions to their subordinates or something like that. Um, and that's scary. But you know what's scary than that? Because, you know, a female boss, you could charm her. You could compliment her hair. You can bring her a cookie or something and she'll be happy. You know, the worst mm. is the is the guy who's trying to impress another woman in a division. Huh. With, I was about to say that, that same is, thing. That is the most dangerous person you will ever meet because that person, if you even flirt lightly, just say something nice about the girl he's interested in, you are public enemy number one. He will see yep. to it that you're destroyed. And mm-hmm. man, oh man, have I seen it so many times. So I was just nice to everyone. Hey, you want to hang out this weekend? No, I'm busy. <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> hang out. So yeah. Let me get to the super chats real quick. Nonstop drive for two bucks. I bet funerals are a good place to meet women. Oh, so funny um story I heard growing up. So uh, well, that was like a, a parable or something. Like there is this uh, woman and she meets a cute guy at like her uncle's funeral or something. And they hang out for a while and they talk. And then like, you know, um, like six months later, um, that woman murders one of her cousins. And, and the question was why, you know, and it turned out that we, 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 everyone had all these things like, well, maybe she met this, maybe she knew this, maybe the guy was this. And, and the answer was because she wanted to see the guy again. 
<laughs> <laughs> because you know clearly he knows her family you know she meets him and hits him off the funeral she doesn't know who he is she wants to see him again so she murders her family members so she can see the guy again I mean, if it works. Holy shit. There, there like, was, yeah, and, and I got, no one figures it out because you won't put yourself in the mind of a psychotic killer. But, like, you know, when you're a complete sociopath, like, that makes sense. Like, yeah, kill him so I can see the guy again. I mean, say whatever you want, but that video a while back that popped up about that girl who became friends with yeah. his mom on Facebook to the book club. Join in my humble club, opinion, yeah. that was a bit extreme where it's like, hmm. I don't know. Some people were like, oh, it's endearing. I'm like, no, no, that's that's a bit extreme, you know, when she makes friends with his mom and blah, 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 just to get his I mean, number. Yeah. I mean, yeah wait till your wife that. and your ex-wife are texting about buying your daughter bras or something. It gets even weirder. Oh, mm. <laughs> oh my. Yeah. Oh, my. No, never, never been there. So Dark let's night, talk Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I didn't I didn't know you were going to read Super Chats. No, it's, it's okay, Nuke. It's okay. You I'm know going to derail every Super Chat. <laughs> oh, the, the, oh, oh, yeah. Come on, Lam. Give me your best. Dark Knight Death for the $5 and one Super Chat. Saw if, Oh, my God. Here we go. Saw F and F on Twitter say you need to make six figs so your wife can stay at home. They're not red pill. They're blue pill. You might need six figures for emergency savings. I make six figures. My wife still has to work to pay the mortgage. Six figures ain't shit now. Oh, damn. Mm. There you go. Yeah. There we go. Seven figs, so you ain't shit. You heard it from our Twitter. <laughs> the, the first number of your six digit salary is a one, you're poor. So no longer the 666 rule. Now it's the 777 rule. Somehow you get a seventh, you know, ab on yeah. your stomach, yeah. too. Some people, yeah, you just yeah. need to train harder. It's like a third eye up, like the middle one up top, you know? Like a third yeah, they've, eye. Yeah. They've, even, they've even started adjusting the tax brackets for this because uh, you don't even pay a 25% uh, tax as a married couple until you're over 270K now. It's almost like 300 grand yeah. is when you get into the 24% tax bracket. Uh, mm. they, they say that if you want a house in Dallas, I'd say like one of the uh, – immediate you know because every city has the loop the highway loop that goes around it. if you want a house right outside that loop like it would be like 635 uh for dallas you need one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars to you need to make one hundred fifteen thousand dollars. i don't that was like a zillow estimate i think or you know all the real estate people got together and made that estimate hey guys do you know what'll fix more housing right. it'll fix more uh, yep the entire mass of the third world moving to your country that'll fix Ooh, housing yeah Oh, no, we're seeing no. that in the Netherlands so, right Someone's got to build those houses. Come on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I honestly, if Mexicans build really fast, and uh, and they suck at it, send them yeah. back. <laughs> I guess it, when, when you go to hang a fan or something, and like you know, it's not blocked right because someone just jury rigs something together really quick. Yeah, you, 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 you have a my lot of racial epithets there. My dad, my dad used to rant so badly because he used to do finishing for houses. You know, he put in oh, door God. frames and baseboard. Every day he'd come home angry because off. <laughs> it was like unlevel. The walls aren't straight. He had to like shim up so much of the door frame to actually get it to sit straight. He was just so angry all the time because the people going in and then people are paying, you know, hundreds of thousand dollars for these house and they're just built so poorly with the cheapest labor possible. It always, it always annoyed him. He can never get over it. Yeah. I'm waiting Shoot, for the man. part of this story where David goes into it, and then he grabbed the belt and took it out on me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So, I mean, yeah. that, that figure you cited there, Nuke, very dark. Very like, like $115,000, that figure you cited, Nuke, that's just like the minimum, right? That's just to get the house yeah. and pay like 3000 a month mortgage. I mean, ideally, if you don't want to like never have money again, you need like double that to make a good down payment to get your mortgage payment down, especially today's interest rates. Right? Like they're over six percent now, which are enormous. And yeah. So, yeah. Like just to be able to afford like, your mortgage payment month to month, like that's a, a real kick in the teeth. Like that's like the bare minimum to get approved for the loan. If you want yeah. like double that, just to have a, a a livable life. Well, because well, they assume that when you're getting a house, you're married, and that your wife will contribute to the expenses. So that's why you know, just like everything, you know, just like everything else. But uh, yeah, but, yeah. Also, like at least a twenty percent down payment to avoid like P and I insurance, and then like you know, I mean, still, and then you got to pay property tax escrowed on top of your mortgage payment too. Like it's a real pain in the butt. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you know, the house is going to have some hidden flaw or issue that they didn't tell you about. You know, maybe the HVAC always back. Yeah, and the thing is, like, um, I know that a lot of the red meat podcasts say that you know you need to make so and so this, so and so that money, right? And I, maybe I should talk about this one day. How to, I did talk. I did write an article about how to save money while dating and all that stuff. But the, the truth of the matter is that if you want a house in a city, in a good city, you know, like 
maybe Dallas. I say Dallas is a decent city to live in, right? The crime, the crime is concentrated in downtown. Um, there's a lot of smart uh, people here. We do have immigrants, but they're like from like Japan and and Vietnam, like very smart people that are in tech. You know, there's a lot of banking here, a lot of old monies here too. Um, good universities around the area, decent universities. So you know, it's a it's a decent city, and it's and it's not Austin priced. It's still a little bit cheaper than Austin, and all that. But I'd say that like right now, um, and I have this conversation with my dad. He's kind of a boomer, kind of Gen X, kind of like you know in that area and he says why don't you have a house and then i have to tell him hey dad like it's this expensive and i'm gonna have my lifestyle will drop like i will be you know living almost paycheck to paycheck and i have to rent rooms out to college kids and all that and do i really want to do that blah blah i'll just stop drinking starbucks junior yeah just yeah i make i have to make my own coffee now yeah i am surprised by how expensive that shit is the whole the whole discussion you need to make six figures for women to like you I think it, it's a it's it's a problem because no. a lot of guys are trying to qualify to a woman's standard, so women can finally find a guy who will expense their future, like the, the whole having a house and all that stuff, right? And also, it's just like you should make six figures for yourself. You know, you shouldn't like because women will never appreciate the amount of money you spend on them ever, no matter There's how. There's plenty of trailer dudes in trailer parks that pull some really hot looking girls. Yeah, this is true. That, yeah, was something yeah. Reddit post I made ages ago. Like, where relationships are restaurants, not banks. Like, once you've already spent that money on a woman, she's enjoyed the meal. You know, it's like, what have you done for me lately? You're not, <laughs> you're not accruing brownie points you can spend later. Like, those yeah, are those you spent the day yeah. you had them. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and that's uh, a lot of guys have issues with that, especially when they date, because they're like, guys will have sex with a woman five times and, and feel obligated to take her out to dinner, even though she's like just had sex with him, like didn't do anything, oh, didn't do dude. anything outside of the. And I'm just like, dude, I'll tell you something right now. Um, a lot of women online celebrate men that. You know, like there was this interview in Miami. You know that black dude that interviews couples on the street and, and influencers. I think it's a set, it's set up beforehand, but I don't oh, know yeah. if you guys have seen him. He mm -hmm. interviewed this couple where the girl uh, and the guy. There was like a rich couple, right, or like maybe a trust fund baby kind of dude. And the dude's like, and the guy's asking him, you know, the red pill questions, like, or well, you know, to to, to cause a little bit of a churn, you know, in, in the interview. And the guy's like, hey, hold on, stop. And then he's saying, like, oh, I, I bought this expensive thing, this expensive that. And all the girls are like, yeah, that's a real man. And I'm like, that's fine. That you get to, you know, that's his choice. He's a man. He does what, what he wants. But as long as you're okay with understanding that that lady next to you once gave away her vagina for free for a guy mm -hmm. like a frat party, or it was just a good day and he spent $15 on a bottle of wine and you want to do that, that's fine, right? But don't ever make the mistake of thinking that you have to pay money in order to keep a woman in your life because they will never appreciate it, no matter how little or how much you spend. They will never appreciate it the way you think they will. So, yeah. Why, why do you think I always say I'm broke? I mean, this is all for that. It's like, Jesus Christ. I always just go for coffee in the beginning. And some guys <laughs> say, like, no women would go for you, would only go for coffee. It's like, it's well, so fucking women, stupid. It's like, it's like they, the women, have you ever dated before? Yeah, it's a filter. I don't, yeah, they filter. Like, yeah. It's if a filter. I bought you a steak dinner on the first date, that would be creepy. I'm trying way yeah. too hard. Yeah. It's like, buy me a steak dinner on the first date. Jesus fucking Christ. Then yeah. we'll talk. <laughs> Otherwise, no, you're getting coffee. However, it serves a game saying, like, right now I'm noticed because I did this last year or the year before. I would say, if a girl asked me, so where do you live? I'd say, I live under a bridge, right? And I live in a decent area, you know? Mm -hmm. um, they didn't like that. It did not. It never went down well. Like, um, I think that only goes well, like, in a day game or night game scenario where you're just talking talking a girl up at a bar. But online dating, women do not like when you come forward and say stuff like that because – for them, um, when online dating is less, less personal, they're trying to get as much information out of you for safety reasons or for, you know. So if you say stuff like that, you want to, like, quell their anxiety about who they're meeting, um, but also be mysterious. So I think for guys, for online dating, kind of avoid the extreme, kind of like, I live under a bridge or I'm broke. But if you're in person, it's better. It, you can say that because she sees you. She sees that you're well-dressed. She sees that you're well-groomed. She sees that you're... The way you speak, the way you move, you look like someone who's, you know, could have a good job. But like online, she doesn't know that. So it's be careful on when you date online here in the United States, saying stuff like I'm broke or I'm I just got out of jail or something it, exciting it like that. You got to be careful on how you do it, man. It depends on how you do it. Like some guys can get away with it 
and some don't. It's the it's the manner of phrasing it. I've like there were girls online where I uh, what was it? Oh, where do you live? Blah blah blah, and just a box under the bridge and now teehee. Of course, like they get it's a joke kind of thing. But I don't know. Yeah, a I lot of women online know will think you're hiding something if you're brushing off her comments. I mean, yeah, you don't you don't need to like send her a copy mm. of your W two, but you know you could tell her what line of work you're in and what part of town you live in. I mean, it worked, it's worked better for me to tell women I'm an engineer. I live in uh, we're not gonna say where I live, but I live in in this neighborhood in Dallas, and they're just like okay. And then I always say I know a place here that's just your vibe, and then I send them the place right because mystery is good, but mystery is better in person. Like being mysterious is much more fun and exciting. And, online there's so much con artists and liars and men that catfish too like you know they they, they hat fish they're bald but they have they wear hats or they're actually you know not who they say that they're not as confident for like imagine online you tell you tell a, a girl yeah i'm gonna do all these things to you and i'm you know this confident guy because it's easy you copy paste whatever you read on reddit and what you say to a girl and then you meet her and it's just uh, the, the girl's like, wait, what? This is, there's a congruency issue, right? Yeah, so, I was just about to say. Yeah. If you're gonna do mode one, like the Alan Roger Curry stuff, do it in person, like online. Relax. It's it's better to surprise her with how cool and charming you are than it is to kind of be this awesome player online and then you meet her in person and you can't be congruent when you say online. Much like Twitter posters and alpha masculinity gurus, when they get exposed, they're just like dorks, you know. So. Yeah. yeah. And Good also, point. like when a woman asks something like, what part of town are you in? That's important information to exchange so you can pick a date place five minutes from one of your residences. Like, you need to know what parts of town each other live in. But I mean, on top of that, if a woman is like, you know, not going to go on a date with you because you answered that question with uh, an, an answer rather than some flippant joke, I mean, like, that's like 0.01% you... of women. Like, you know, it's like, yeah. oh, his game is boring. He told me where he lives. I'm not going to date him, said no woman ever. Like, mm -hmm. You just play the, play the rest of the game right. It's okay to tell a woman, you know, where you live and what you do for a living. I mean, some women can do that too. Act all tough on text and whatever, and then you meet them and it's like, oh. No, oh, that's 100% of women. 100% of women will have this bitchy attitude online or like on dating apps, and you meet them, and they're just like, this is how they sit on a date. Legs crossed like this, and they're just oh, like. Yeah. My wife was so confident in text on online dating. When we met yeah. for the first time at the restaurant, she was so quiet. And I'm like, my yeah. God, I'm, I'm carrying this whole conversation. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and that's why when you when women get all like bitchy online and they act like these like you know thought leaders and political leaders and all that stuff and they're so bitchy, you meet them online or you meet them in person and they're these like really meek, quiet, teehee, like oh that's so cool that you are this and, you know they it's it's all a ruse like it's it's the women are not meant to be congruent right we don't yeah. care if they're congruent or not we just care that if they're hot available. And in front of us, you know? can I just say why. that I love how T T he is universal? Mm -hmm. Like every guy understands it. It's like T he is like, I know what he means. Yep, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You go like, like the, 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 the farms in China are like, oh yeah, T he. You go to Russia, it's like, oh, I thought T he. A woman. <laughs> yeah, you go to the you go to the Amazon tri tribes in the Amazon, the T he, and they'll be like, huh. Uh, tee -hee. Tee -hee. Yeah, Ooh. I understand. All across you, like every man, every age group, every country, everyone knows T he. Yeah. Everybody. Okay, let me get to these two super chats real quick. XL sell for the ten dollars. Thank you very much, man. All red pill men are evil. Some dry coach. Yeah, like I said, bad, bad than beyond psychology. And we got Juan Do for the two euros. Thank you very much, Juan. Mid six figures, larger than five hundred k. You ain't really doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. You know. First off, uh, most of the most of the girls you'll ever get is like before you make six figures, right? Because once you're making six figures, you're probably busy. You probably have a, you're stressed out because you have a higher position in a company. Uh, you're probably uh, kind of burnt out when you're making like, I don't know, on the way up to that is when you, cause you're just probably like at a mid position in a job where you don't have to make a lot of decisions. You have much more time and, you know, and when you make six figures too, you kind of like don't want to spend it on women anymore. <laughs> you kind of don't want to spend it on women. Like you want to spend that on a girl that deserves it. Like you get to a point where you're just like, I made all this money. My back hurts from working. My left knee's messed up from the military. Um, and I don't think all this work should go to some girl, some tee hee girl, um, <laughs> racking up my my you know my racking up my my bill at a restaurant or at a at a bar eighty dollars on 
uh, mimosas at well, 10 p.m. I, right? well, who drinks mimosas at 10 p.m. anyway, girl? What are you doing? I, I yeah, remember, she just selected herself out with that choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that was a I, bad decision. I remember yeah. years ago, I was on a I was on a stream with Troy Francis, and we started talking about dates, blah blah blah, and like, do you do a restaurant or whatever? It's like I took my mm. girl to McDonald's or Burger King, and back, Burger King was back then because they had uh, they had bacon cheese fries that was new on the menu. Ooh. And the girl I was dating um, at the time, she lived in a city that had Burger King. And I looked at her like, you want to go to Burger King and try that out? We had the best time of our life. And all these guys in the chat lost their freaking mind. It's like, you don't take a girl to Burger King. What woman would date a guy who takes her to Burger King? Burger King in I Europe mean, is pretty pretty dope. It's pretty nice. I'm yeah, I've heard. It's yeah. one of the worst restaurants in the States. But like you, you guys do fast food right over there. I think you have yeah. real cows or something. Yeah, it's, I'm European. Very clean. Yeah, the Burger Kings are very clean. Um, they're like chilies here. Or chilies are Outback Steakhouse. It's like that. European level. fast food is, is, is good. Also, also <laughs> by the way, that I wanted to talk about, bounce something off to you guys. Do you? Why is Chili's and like Outback Steakhouse like all these amazing steakhouses that is true Americana, right? Why are why are women not wanting to go to those places? Like every time I go and I have a spicy mango margarita and I have this the, the surf and surf, which is very cheap, and they have good mm -hmm. specials on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, why why are we not like celebrating this? Like this is one of the most the best parts of America is those steakhouses on the road. Like I don't get that's it. what I I always wondered that too because I seem to remember there was a time where that was a place you could take her and she would not complain i mean i'm i'm suddenly hearing that red lobster is a terrible option to go to and i'm going okay well red lobster uh you know i understand red lobster I mean, chain no, restaurants, see, that's, like, that's like, that's like one of my favorites that that is one of my favorites and i will always stand by those cheddar bay biscuits dang it and i'm just like now that i hear oh gross i don't want to go there or yeah outback i think is one of them texas roadhouse got dissed too and i'm going Excuse me. Yeah, no, I, mean, I, I don't understand it either. This it's funny how girls don't thing understand too. that yeah. that might be our like vetting system where it's like, if I can take you to McDonald's or Burger King or KFC, then we might do something fancy. Although, in all honesty, I am not made for fancy. I am a fucking hillbilly in that sense. I'll, I'll just admit that right away. Like, I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. I think it's more just like when it gets to like it's a Chili's, for example, that's a chain restaurant. So that connotes, at least in a woman's mind, non-creativity and cheapness, mm -hmm. even though Chili's is respectable food or Southwestern. I always walk out of a yeah. Chili's or an Outback completely satisfied, perfect, but with a perfect buzz mm -hmm. and absolutely happy. I don't get it. I'm like, this is amazing. <laughs> why, why are we not funding this? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I, I think you're your normal girl in your normal small town. You met at HEB or something, you know, and then you took for Chili's that night. Like, that's probably a totally normal and acceptable date. But when you go on the mm. internet, where, as we know, things are always true and real on the internet, yes. you see that, like, women like, oh, yeah, I charge a guy $250 just for me to show up on a date because my hair costs that much. I'm like, you your hair is your business you know like i don't know you but like, yeah and that's like a normal thing oh yeah guys should pay just for me to show up on a date it better be a nice steakhouse like you know i mean that's an internet thing in the real world you meet a girl at the supermarket you can take her for coffee and it's fine i want to get paid to exist yeah I want to get yeah, it, is, it is hard to brag yeah. about going oh we went to chili's i guess yeah, it doesn't sound sure. as good to her friends see yeah, and I'm thinking, but nowadays, yeah, I... like you know, we met online, we had a coffee date, we really hit it off, and things went from there. That's that's like every girl's story. I don't know why girls are so embarrassed to have every girl's story. Well, that's why I say like wine bar, like wine bars is a good place because a bottle of wine is what thirty bucks, tip forty, and a dinner yeah. at Chili's is like eighty between two people. If you're going to cougars at wine bars between wives, like so, wine bars are like a pro hack. Like it's not that expensive, but it's classy. I'm like, why are we not talking about wine bars? Because I, there's one down the street here, and um. They have like you know the wine selection isn't crazy, but are you really going to a wine bar to have the best wine? No, you're going just to talk to people and socialize. American diners, just and, saying. And nobody Rich. actually knows shit about wine. It all tastes like you know the same to most people, and so you just get. I a like red Malbec. Like, yeah, I just like Malbec, and that's it. Like, like, yeah, it's like a ten dollar Pinot Noir. Like you know, here's a Bordeaux from France for twelve dollars. I'm having yeah. the fancy shit. Like like nobody I mean, knows. You just like you, but you seem like you know something. You drink it. You sip wine. You feel classy. Great date night. But why Why would you even want more than an American diner? It's like breakfast food and black coffee. What more could you need? God, I could eat eggs every meal. Yeah, oh, no, wa same Waffle here. House. Like, that's another one. Like, Waffle okay, House, fair, yeah, fair. There's drug deals probably going and child trafficking going in the table next to you. But, yep. man, are there hash browns and pancakes good? Jesus Christ. You people, oh you gosh, people those... need to, like... You people! <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I don't love America. <laughs> Americans perfected breakfast. Yeah, that's a fact. You did.
True. Okay, let me get to these uh, last super chats, and then we'll uh, we'll wrap up. Let's see. Seeds D, good to see you, sir. Howdy, post zero homies. Howdy, good sir. Quando with the two euros underneath five k, you are C level or close. No time to game. Oh, I did. I don't know what you mean with C level, but maybe the other like guys. Like C suite, probably like C tier or something like that. Like you're you're not even B tier yet or something. If you're making five hundred k. Oh, like that. It's, <laughs> it's like this. Well, like I, I said, did. once you make 100K, you're not going to want to date as much. I promise you. Yeah. You're not no, going right. to I, 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 spend money on these bitches. No, you're you're going to be probably tired of people shitting on you in your whole 20s and taking your money. And you're going to start yeah. being like, wait, I earned this money. This is for me. I'm going to get a dog. I'm going to get a mm. nice piano. You got gonna, options. Yeah, I want to mm. live in a nice place. And I want to travel to see my friends all over the country. That's literally what guys switch yep. you're also working too hard and too much to like be having all that time like, that's yeah. why i ended up married a second time is i'm in between wives i make six figures i got my daughter every other week i'm working my ass off at my job and i'm like so my in between weeks without the daughter i'm like going out on dates and I'm, like dating is terrible like yeah. i'm working so hard at my job i got my kid every other week i've got everything to do in the house i'm like i don't have time for this shit this is so tedious and then yeah. every single woman is the same woman with red hair and like you know, catchphrases or something <laughs> And it's like the, the older women get, they become more the same woman. Like women in their 20s are at least a little diverse. Like they, they kind of like come together. Once you're in your, like your late 30s, early 40s, you're not married, <laughs> yeah. you are the same woman. They become the they same woman. They converge. Maybe, Guys, maybe, date, maybe date when you're broke. Burn. Date when you're kind of have a little bit of money. You know, don't take them to dinner. But a $40 wine date is not going to. Yeah, maybe some women yeah, have a little bit of yeah, money. If you can't afford like 20 bucks of vodka drinks or $40 bottle of wine for a date and like, you know, and you're like, oh, no, we got to split it. I'm in a long house. Like, get your finances in order before you date. Like, yeah. buying 20 bucks worth of drinks, like, quadruples your chances of going home with a girl. When you're about to go home with her, like, let's split the bill. You just cut your chances by 75%. Like, take the sure yeah. thing. Come on. Yeah. I never had an issue with that. I'm sorry. I never you guys, had an issue You guys are different. Things. It's it's different. I mean, you're, you, you, yeah, you're, I'm a Euro fag. Yeah. Yeah, at the end of the date, if you do, if you ask her to split the bill, what you were saying yeah. is, I, I'm not even taking my shot. I didn't have a good I, time. I don't want to see you again. I, I've even had girls buy me my coffee where it's like, well, you drove here. Coffee's on me. It's like, okay. Oh, I'm that, telling that you, I'm telling you Jack, it's because you're Dutch. It's, it's why. You know, uh, you guys, it's, so it's not because spirit. I'm six foot tall, I have the abs, and like still the long Maybe. hair, or the full head of hair. I don't know. Yeah, mm -hmm. but like, yeah, you're not gonna want to spend money like date when you're coming up on the up and up, right? Maybe your mid twenties, mid or like twenty six, twenty seven, when you're finally getting enough to like blow a little bit of cash on nothing. But once you make six figures, you're gonna be like, you're gonna you're gonna be sitting on your couch, looking at your apartment. Everything's nice. You're gonna be like, why do I want to drive ten, five, fifteen minutes to go see a girl and have her spend my money? on the chance that she might have sex with me. It becomes harder. Like you still will do it if the girl's hot enough and she's pleasant enough, but it just, you're going to have that, like that pragmatism and that rationale is going to kick in even harder because in your 20, you're super horny. You're just, you don't care. You're reckless. But when you're older, you're just like, I got work at eight in the morning. Yeah. Like, well, hmm, when you can yeah. get girls, it's almost like, you know, like with some reliability, it's just a matter of like taking care of yourself. Like I'm hungry. I'm going to go out to eat. I'm horny. I'm going to go meet a girl. Like it's just one more thing you do to kind of take care of yourself and meet your needs. And then you go on with your life. So, I mean, <laughs> Like, you know, how horny are you when you get a little older and you have a lot of stuff going on? Maybe a little less than you were when you were 21. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's the best time to date is like in your in your mid, like 25 and up to 30, 25 to like 35, because in that in that area, you're just finally barely getting a hold on your finances. You're 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 above water. You know, you're probably fit because you start lifting around that time. And uh, yeah. Like when you're after 35, your standards for women's not for looks, but like for their behavior and their how they waste your time go way up. You're just like, yeah, I'm not I'm not going on this date getting ready so I can hear uh, a girl bitch about her job. Like I, I'm not in the mood today. I'm tired and you're being exhausting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You tend yeah, to hold oh, on yeah. to your plates a little harder because you're just like, I I would dump the, you know this girl kind of is annoying, but. She's been around for the last six months and she's pleasant. I don't mind going hanging out with her because I know that 
she's not going to waste my time. You know, yeah, like, I hear all these guys talking about like, like training your bitches <laughs> and stuff and doing this and this. You got to teach them this and how these bats like that sounds so exhausting. Yeah, I, I, I got to train my dog. That's already why do I got to train a human being like that? I need to grind. I need to grind in my RPG. God damn it. I need to train, train my what, once you're dating adults, like they should not be a source of exhaustion in your life. Like they're yeah. adults. 70. We got 70 people. God damn. I'm, I'm too people. busy trying to train Pokemon and level up in my life and level up in Final Fantasy 16. I don't have time for any of this. I still need yeah. to learn Hydro. There's a 16 now? It's like, uh, it's like Ryan says. No one wants to fuck on a full stomach either. So why are you spending $150 on dinner just so she can... You know, obviously, if you know the girl... Like, there are girls that I dated casually for long periods of time. And they were, like, doing a lot. Of, they were taking care of my dog. They were doing me favors. They were picking me up from the airport. We weren't in a relationship. But, like, I'm like, okay, well, you, you do. You're, like, you're my homie. You have my back. I know you can leave at any moment, right? But, you know, let's go to dinner because I'm hungry. And uh, you live five minutes away. And, it's you know, and then have a good night because I haven't been out for, like, a month. Like, that's okay. And, and this is why I oh, don't yeah. trust women who are not into morning sex. It's like, like you said, like, nobody wants to fuck in the full stomach. It's like. When are you most empty in the morning? So just saying, she's yeah, not into it. Or Run. make sure you have wipes though, because those morning poops will, you know. Make sure you have the wet wipes, the dude wipes, or the the feminine wipes, and don't flush them down the toilet, even oh, if yeah. they say flushable. Oh, yeah. Get a bidet. Them. Get a so, bidet. No, no, they just, no, they're kind of gay, dude. Those, I don't know. Those. It's like kind of gay. I, they're European. I'm European. I can yeah. get away so, with that. What about what about pre date sex? Like, so you show up at her place, you have sex, and then you go out and have a good meal, come home, and yes, sleep. Like, yes. I usually take naps after sex. I don't know. <laughs> well, like one of our best dates um, with my wife, we're going to go rock climbing or something. And so, like, I showed up at her apartment and she's like dressed in like, you know, skin tight, like, you know, rock climbing. so we, we never made it to rock climbing. And so then we're, we're <laughs> for like, <laughs> different so climbing. Much money. <laughs> and so we checked the, the title, like, it's like 9 30 at night or something. We realized we're hungry. We've been in bed for like hours, like, we've been at noon or something. And so, like, we, we go and find a restaurant. I had like the best octopus I've ever had. You know, we're like in our rock climbing clothes and all like, you know, we've been having sex all day. And, that was one of the best dates ever. Like you know, yeah. I think it was like like three three or four months into dating the wife, and like she ordered ribs. We were out. That's how I know we're there. All right, romance is dead. You know, like. <laughs> yeah. But okay, let me get to this super chat real quick because it's been waiting here. Mona for four ninety nine. Thank you very much, Mona, for understanding the correct answer to the Mewtwo question in chat <laughs> by any means necessary. I missed the Mewtwo question, or was that? I, I did too, because I, I don't see it in the chat, I, and I don't remember any of us mentioning it. stuff. No, I was about to say, the, don't be the Vaporeon answer, please. I no, don't need to hear that again. In Rule Zero yesterday, I remember that, but I don't oh. remember the exact question. But yeah, um, mm. Jesus Christ, over seventy people watching. Please, people, hit the like if you haven't already. Tell Send you to get oh, Jack to your America. Is seventy a lot, Jack? I don't, I don't <laughs> yeah, know are we doing this again? Like the yeah. super chats for the trip, but no. Oh, yes, God. get get Jack to Texas. Get Jack, Jack, to, Jack to, Texas. to Texas. Yes, exactly. Jack, right. Jack to Texas. Goddamn right. Jack to Texas. What are the metrics? Jack? Is a big number? Like I don't know this. Hmm. Is seventy a big uh, number? I don't know this. Like what? What are like? What's a good no, YouTube like, metric? Mostly, mo mostly my streams. Uh, they have topped. Usually at thirty or something like that. When I do it, when, when I have all you guys on, like the the maximum was fifty, and today we hit all of a sudden seventy. Oh, so it's like forty percent well. growth. You're doing better in Bitcoin. No, yeah. <laughs> I am did now the official Bitcoin of this space. <laughs> Didn't get Bitcoin take a hit? Uh, recently, because of the yeah, yeah because the inflation of numbers suck ass, and then when now there's like war in Iran, so everyone's selling all their assets for dollars again, and people are panicking. So I'm buying more. No, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I mean, people losing their minds again over crypto, like it's going down. Like in eight days, that it's the having. No, nothing ever happens, bros. It's yeah, like through, happens. through when you look back at the charts, every time right around the halving, it takes a little bit of a dump again, and then a couple of months after the halving, it's going up. So this is an opportunity. Yeah, but they always there. Every time is different. Money. Like oh, the ETS, the big money is manipulating everything. There's a war now. Israel's doing his thing. Like, like everyone thinks every time is. Different different and i mean like all assets well actually like all assets they go eternally up long term because your fiat currencies are designed to inflate to zero while your government takes all of your wealth and extracts it from you there is no fiat currency you should hold not the dollar nothing else like own real estate own something but you know hey um, what happened to noob you got rid of him did he no, uh, I did he hit end end stream he got no. nuked where's nuke <laughs> no reactor blew up no. Oh. Didn't that happen to they him took on him down. stream they yesterday? Found him. <laughs> Thank the Lord. What did you do? What did you do? There he is. 
I, they took him out. Yeah. The, I, the dog jumped on the power cord. Yeah, probably. So he said, walk me again. Yeah. Walk me again, human. He is a very uh, cute dog. One way to know that a girl's undateable now is if she starts talking about the conflicts. Like, I, I'm like, I don't, like, on social media, if she talks a lot about those conflicts and wants to be, like, <laughs> commenting on them, I'm just like, uh, you know, I don't know. Any girl who's know. on Twitter, like, participating in any of this shit is automatically, like, out of the running. Like, like no just, sane woman would be there. How did they get there? How does a I woman just find get it, I just I find know. it as uh, permission for me to become a little bit more racist and see how she reacts. Then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's a good question. Like, like, how do girls end up in this dark corner of the internet arguing with men? Like, how do, what makes a woman wake up and explore and find this on the internet and end up there? It is you know, the, remember the whole Margo <laughs> Robbie versus uh, uh, um, Sydney Sweeney, who's hotter mm -hmm. on Twitter. Like Wait, I went to a pool that party. Happened? That's easy. Yeah, that was last year around summer, and I went to my pool. My pool is pretty nice, and I, you know, there's people. It's a great place to meet friends and meet girls because you know everyone's half naked and and drinking white claws and relaxing. Like it's a great place to meet people. Um, and I and I I'm like, oh, let me try this out. So I ask a girl, a, a blonde chick, hey, who's hotter, right? And she just talk, talk, talk. But imagine I did the same thing. I was like, so Israel, am I right? She's like, wait a minute. I have an opinion on this. Oh my that, God. That, uh -oh. I'm just like, Jesus Christ. Like, how did you, why? What, they what did, happened? I think so. So from what I figured out um, from, you know, I keep an eye on this kind of thing. Uh, it does seem like they get a lot of their information from social media, especially all shorts videos and TikTok, and all of it comes from something like that. So they'll hear about one thing and they want to dive a little bit deeper, or if they watch the video as a whole, more videos like that get recommended to them. And then they find themselves, as we said, in this kind of corner eventually, and they'll find us and they'll be like, wait a minute, this is, this is horrible. Oh no, I gotta, yeah. you know, I mean, that's how they found out about like Tate for goodness sake or anybody they like them. They or mistake the algorithm. Podcast. Yes, yes, they yes. mistake the algorithm for being informed and being yeah. intelligent. Pontificating on that, mistake. though. Like, like the mm -hmm. new generation kind of scares the piss out of me. Like, I have a lot of edgy viewpoints, but like, I'm 44 years old. I reach my collection of eclectic and edgy viewpoints based on life experiences, things I've observed. Mm -hmm. Like, I have come to my viewpoints. And the younger yeah. generation is like, the generation of received identities and opinions. They are told what certain camps of people that belong to their identity on the internet are supposed to believe. They receive these opinions. They repeat these opinions. And like, they have not come to those opinions. They have not formulated them based on any knowledge or experience. They've just received the opinion and they regurgitate it. All women so, are hoes. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I, I, that's kind of the fact that like this is our new generation of you know people, but men and women kind of scares the piss out of me. That all these people are like receiving imperating opinions, and nobody knows anything. But these opinions become truths because we have the internet. So now, you know, the biggest, you know, loudest brand making clout stir, you know, on the internet is like you know controlling millions. And now suddenly, what Taylor Swift thinks about the war is important. Like it, it's shocking. Yeah, one of the one of the big things of dating, uh, especially younger women these days, is that you're going to have to regulate their internet. Um, Usage. Mm -hmm. if, if you if you have a girlfriend, one of the best things you can well, do. Why the what I said about being exhausting? Yeah. Um, what are the, Take her phone the, away. No, I mean you got to tell you got to explain to her. Hey, you got to sit down and like, hey, there are women on the internet that are have failed in their relationships and they're very angry, and they and they're going to tell you things like, I am I am the cause of all your problems on the world. Me, a man, a, a guy. Who decided to take you on a coffee date you liked and you gave him a blowjob and you're like, okay, I like this guy. He's all right. Like they're gonna say that it's my fault that you have these feelings sometimes. There's also gonna be yeah. people that are trying to get to convince you that it's this things happening all over the world is your problem and you have to participate with your opinion on to how to help to solve that problem. And you have to like yeah. sit down because that is the biggest thing right now that's causing churn in relationships is. Women going online, seeing a tick, thirty second tick, oh uh, how terrible men are, and then they come to you and they're like, oh, "Roman Empire, this," and I'm like, so, "Hey, we're going Roman to Roman Empire was so cool." So, yeah, that's really yeah. cool. Let's go to ice cream and fucking relax. Like, put the so phone down. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say it's no wonder they're that a lot more of them are miserable now because it used to be that all they did was talk to their single friends and then they would be you know telling you how terrible telling them how terrible you are things like that and now you got internet girls that don't even know who you are saying this and saying this is why your man is bad and this is why you should feel bad for being with him. Yeah, yeah. Social media does a fantastic job of warping women's brains into thinking that any issue that affects any woman at any place at any time. Therefore, immediately applies to the chick who's seeing it, and Anybody therefore else she has to think about it. Anybody else have that Kim Wilde in their head? 
Yeah, that, that inability to read something on the internet and depersonalize it and think that's interesting and is not about me personally. Like that seems like pretty basic skills, but 50% of the population lacks said skills. Yeah. yeah, you kind of have to realize that a lot of girls, they need to understand, hey, you got to explain, hey, you're susceptible, right? You are susceptible, right? Social media is what's destroying you as a person. It's going to harm you. Does it matter if it makes it's a high? It's like it's like what it, it's a hundred times worse than what pornography is to men, right? Because men are still have shame about pornography. Pornography's number one goal is to overcome men's innate shame at looking at boobs and jerking off on internet, and they can't do that. It's been like a decade, and they've been like they try to make Pornhub into like a social media site so they can be like, I'm logging into my Facebook. Pornhub account thing, and I can. It's normal, guys. Like, hey, what are you doing? I'm, I'm gonna go jerk off real quick to this new girl. Oh, I like this one. Check out this video. Yeah, you know? exactly. Oh, she looks like a girl I used to know. Jesus. The only time I've ever discussed a porn star was like when I was in college with my my best closest, and maybe in the military, closest friends where there was no one around. We were alone, and we all still made fun of each other, dude. Right? Oh. Whereas a girl's social media habits, it's like uh, a girl can go online. And be told and, and look at all these women and be like, I'm not good enough. Fly to Dominican Republic, pay four thousand, three thousand dollars for a BBL, which is a life-threatening surgery if, if it's done wrong. Um, come back just to get one percent more attention from men she she finds disgusting. And we say yeah. that social media isn't bad for women. Come on. <laughs> well, I mean, like we the way you're talking, yeah, Duke. Like we like, like, need to get rid of this focus on ass. People, I am yeah. so sick and tired of it. Bring back the decent rack. You have to get rid of brown people like me, or else. No, I was just forward. about to say yeah. the white man is a boobs man. You know? yeah. Yeah. The, the way you're talking, though, like to the us, white dude, man like, is a breast man. Like, like the way you're, you're, you're very like, well, your women are susceptible to this. We're gonna watch out for this. We portray this. Like you could talk to us that way, but when you know you have a woman who comes home, you know your girlfriend, she's like blah blah blah, internet thing. Like you can't say, well, you're susceptible to this, and here's what's going on in your brain. It's like you know, it's like, hey, babe. Twitter's not real life. You want to go get some ice cream? And yeah. like, that's really as much as you can say. Yeah, well, let's go to get ice cream. And it, it, you know. See, the thing is, is like, that's correct what you have to say. But at the same time, I argue that Twitter is becoming more and more real life every single day. We uh, talk about this know. every stream. Like the fact that yeah. like, generating clout and you know, the way to future your online brand, that's going to become like more us than us. Yeah. Uh, no. I don't. I don't want to be. I don't what, want to. Like, what if I no longer world. exist in the real world? What if, like, our Twitter, the internet personality, is more me, more important, more famous? I hope I get cheat codes because I want wings. Damn it, I want wings. Just mm. say. Well, the thing is, is like you know, uh, people talk about like, oh, like the the internet isn't real life. Well, I mean, there's clearly something not entirely. You know, that's not the whole story, right? Because you know, I have a relationship with you guys, and most of us have only ever met online we've never actually met in person but why do i you know like i don't think it's just parasocial like weirdness i think there actually is something there you know like i have conversations with guys on stream that i've only talked to but i've talked to them for years at this point and i feel like i know some of them better than people i know actually in real yeah. life yeah and you know? mm -hmm. it's it's slowly becoming that because more people are spending more time online they're also sharing very like this whole girlfriend meme thing wife jack like er, it's pretty real. It's real to me. Like when guy when guys post a good one of it or a good version of it, I'm just like, oh, yeah, they're great. Yeah, <laughs> so funny. I understand that. Yeah, and it's just like the internet's becoming more real. I, I find myself sometimes talking to people in real life sometimes, and I'm like, I relate more to the people online than I do this guy in front of me, which is kind of sad in a way. But the internet, um, the only problem with the internet is that people there's always the the incentive to monetize your opinions mm -hmm. and stuff like that, which, you know, obviously I do it. A lot of people do it, but it, in order, if you're going to do that, you, you're going to have to have some kind of check and balance in your life. And my check and balance is going out and doing like meeting women in real life, salsa night, hanging out with friends. There's people that don't do that and also have opinions online and they'll say crazy stuff about the world. And it's just like, you can tell, Hey dude, the internet's great, but you have to like go to a pool party once in a while or, or talk to a cashier, you know, or flirt with a, or if you're a lady, flirt with a guy. And if you're a, girl, a guy, flirt with a girl once in a while, you know, get into an argument with your mom, like real life stuff. Because if you don't, you're going to, it's going to, you're going to be weird. You're just going to 
be a weird person, you know? Well, that's part of like this, the reason I say like the internet's not real is because the people aren't real because nine tenths of the people on it are trying to find a pipe dream of if I can do enough internet crap, I will make money and not have to get a real job. And everyone's trying to exercise that pipe dream by building who they are on the internet. And so mm. no one I see on the internet, you know, is really who they really are. When I read some edgy tweet or something or someone talking about those red pillars or someone talking about them women's, like it's never a real person saying a real thing. It's someone just trying to get attention because maybe one day they won't have to get a real job then. And like once people can start being able to use the internet for money, things got kind of weird. Yeah. And uh, now we have bots. The bots ruined everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it also just is what happens whenever you democratize the space, you know, and open it for everybody. I mean, it always will inevitably lead to the lowest common denominator. It's just how it goes. Yeah. Connecting uh, what country? Connecting what? Country? Connecting <laughs> fucking India to the Internet has been a disaster for humanity. My God. Dude, oh, Bob's and Vegeta has turned into Aston Bio now. <laughs> and on that lovely... You fucking see these guys in our comments. I they're all like the Manosphere people and such. It's like, oh my god, the women will not date us brown men. Like, I don't fucking care about your fucking problems. <laughs> yeah, Stop coming over here. Yeah. <laughs> and on that lovely quote, let's cue the music. I think that's a perfect message for Red Hawk. Very positive signal to the world. Why end it, why end it on a on a happy note? We can end it on a don't connect certain people to the internet. <laughs> um, just end it with the song two to the loop. There you the go. The meme is just the meme is wholesome. I find the meme very wholesome for guys who have actually had girlfriends have been in a relationship. I find the meme very wholesome. It's very I find it validating, way. Jack. The fact that, you know, mm -hmm. we can take men from all over the world, all 185 countries, different age groups, different relation of marital statuses, and we realize that we all have the exact same experiences because women are just women. Like, that's very validating. Mm -hmm. Tee hee. Tee. Just mm -hmm. saying. Tee -hee. Anybody else? My car is making a weird noise. <laughs> 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 I forgot, to post one. I forgot to post one, if you, especially if you live in a city. Uh, can you come down and help me parallel park? That one. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Jesus. The, this, the meme kind of reminds me of like another tweet I saw, which was talking about anime, which mm -hmm. says anime is brilliant because they betray women as being mentally the same as small children, which they mm -hmm. are. <laughs> oh, this yeah, way of that's... writing and thinking has totally been lost. By yeah, Western so writers. I think uh, that, like Outlaw Star, this anime right here that I watch, yeah. um, it's an old 90s anime. It came out like in 91 or 92. It's good. Um, it's a space cowboy anime. It's pretty dope. It's pretty masculine. And one of the – it's it's strange to see a female character be like the butt of every joke, like the comic relief, and get punched in the face constantly. Like, And, mm. and I'm just like, you're never going to see that in American media ever. I mean, what yeah. can we say? Some women deserve to get hit. <laughs> Pearl. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just enjoying enjoying what they them for what they are you know it's fun i think that's yeah that's why anime girls are so much more entertaining than uh american ones you know on tv and live action because at least you know they don't they don't take themselves nearly as seriously and they're a lot more fun to watch so a lot better to look at too um i put all the links to everybody's stuff in the description so go check out arts go check out dave from the scarred thumb podcast go check out newt nuke at cadillo nuclear dot uh cadillo nuclear <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll get it yeah yeah nuke. yeah i found my uh, my version in our private chat i found that one like peak peak level description uh red hawk and red pilled hawk and the governor at uh the governor and for me hit the like subscribe if you have it comment down below your thoughts of this show yeah, if you want to support the channel click the join button my version book of book mona juando uh where are you siege xl self dark night dev and non-stop Dre. thank you very much for the super chats we had a busy stream today thank you everybody for watching and uh we'll see you next time Cheers. Next week, Revenge Fantasy. Everybody you agree? Sure. Agree. Yeah. I'll try to derail it next Revenge. week, too. Yeah. Cool. We'll talk about See you guys. Or See you guys then. Bye.